Is Africa cursed? Are black people cursed? This is a very important question. Not cursed by men and people, but are we under some divine, some divine curse or punishment? This is the real question that black people, black folks, really need to ask. Instead of just looking at the so-called white man and looking at the system of things, we need to go higher. You see, the, the, the curse is from a higher authority. The lower authorities, the rulers, the archons, have done their best to keep us under this spell, under this so-called spell of Leviathan, under this hypnotic spell. They've done their best. And, and for the most part, this, 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 this spell has kept a lot of ones hypnotized, kept a lot of ones bamboozled, kept a lot of ones distracted. It's like keeping a lot of ones off track, off of the right track, the, the way of the King of Kings and his Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. You see, Ethiopians, the Ethiopians or the Hebrews, the true Amhara kins of America and abroad, even in Africa, have been placed under a spell, under a hypnotic spell, and therefore have turned away from the covenant, the Kal Kidan, the Benai Berit. And now this spell that they are under is called the spell of the Leviathan, the spell of Leviathan. It was cast in the 15 and the 1600s upon the arrival of the so-called slaves, or the enslaved Beta Israel here in the Americas, and many of them were known as the Amirs. Amirs, as the word in the Arabic means princes. These are the princes of the Beta Israel. These are the princes of the family of Abraham. So many of them were Israelites, and many of them were Ishmaelites, and many of them were Medeanites. But the key link is that they were in the covenant. They were children of Abraham that came to this land because the vision that was shown to Father Abraham was that his seed, his seed of his seed, Yosan shall be. Yosan enslaved in a land that's not theirs. But now the covenant of kingship comes down through Yisahak and Yaakov and the Beta Israel. Now, this spell that our people are under is the spell of the dollar bill. It's a spell of materialism. And when we look at the great seal of the United States of America, of this spiritual Egypt, we can see all the signs and the symbols of this seal. Now, when the spell was cast, the Amirs and the Amharakin, they were taken from their homeland. We was taken from our homeland of Ethiopia. And when we say Ethiopia, we're not just speaking of Ethiopia as the as the so called little country, the small country that is known as today. And it's not even a small country, but this is what they call it. It's not even just that land, but we're speaking about continental Ethiopia, but mainly East Africa, that includes Sudan, that includes Kenya, that includes the Horn of Africa, that includes Uganda, that includes that whole region in ancient times was known as the Tob, the good land, Tobia, and later on it was called Ethiopia. And we were bound not only by the physical chains of so-called slavery, but also spiritually. We were spiritually blinded and blindsided and psychologically put at odds against one another. This is what many can identify in how to make a slave. How to make a slave is the quintessential document when it's properly studied and also applied. When applied sciences are, are applied to that documentation, we have the ability through the covenant to undo that slave mentality. But first we have to face, we have to face what we and our ancestors have done, how we and our ancestors have gone astray from the covenant. When we look at Exodus chapter, chapter 20, it says to the, to, the, to the third and fourth generation, that curse comes down to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate him. And what does it mean by hate him? It means hate the covenant, hate the, 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 the God of the covenant and the Messiah of the covenant and, and everything the covenant stands for. And the covenant is known to us 
as that rit it hymenote, as that rit it amin, that ritua hymenote, that, that right faith, that true faith. Some call it the orthodox faith, but they should begin from the Ethiopic and not the Greek. You see, part of the enslavement comes from that Greek mentality, ignorantly not knowing your own roots and thinking that the foreign mind and what is in the foreign is higher than, their gods are higher than the god of your ancestors, the god of Abraham and the god of Yisahak and the god of Yaakob in spirit and in truth. You see, we were not born with a spell over us, but it's something that we did inherit from our parents and our foreparents and our ancestors and, and through the, the Babylonian and Confucian society. You see, the physical agents of Leviathan, of the enemy, of the, 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 the so-called pale man, so-called white man, led the ruling class of slaves into believing, believing that there was a chance for freedom with enough money. You see, this is what the ruling class of slaves were led into believing, that if they had enough money, they could just buy their freedom, and that the only hope for salvation or being released from captivity was with and through money. This is what many of the Negroes, the dead blacks, believe to this very day, and therefore the curse continues, and it's not even the use of money, it's the love of money. You see, money itself is not evil, but when you place your love and the highest love and the highest respect and the highest authority on money, therefore you place the highest love on money, that's what becomes evil. So our people were deceived into believing that they had a chance for freedom with just enough money. Man, them still believe this to this day if they have just enough money. And when you look at those blacks and those people who have had plenty of money, even with Michael Jackson and others, they had a lot of money, but once they got a lot of money, they wanted to find out more about black people, where they come from, who are they, spirituality. So that money itself did not buy them release from captivity. It may have bought them a couple of luxuries. They could go a couple of places, wear a little better clothing and so forth and so on, but they were not free. They were still in captivity. What it did was really show many of them how deep in captivity that they were because they thought once they had the money, what they would be able to do. You understand know, how free they would, but free they would be, but what they did was what they had to do to get the money. You see, what they had to do to get the money, how they were bound and, and binded up more and even in a deeper, a lower level of hell because of what they had to compromise, how they had to sell their souls to even get in the league to get those sort of dollars and that sort of money. So the slaves thought this to be true because all that Masa ever asked him to do was work so that Masa could become richer and enjoy the luxuries of freedom more and more. So they saw what Masa did and they thought that, well, you know, they thought it was being logical. Well, if Masa has money and if I get money, I'll be just like Masa. As a matter of fact, this was all he would ever see Masa do. He only saw Masa making money. He only saw Masa enjoying, enjoying the luxuries of life based on the sweat of slaves and niggas. So what did a lot of the niggas begin to think? This is where you see the niggas, man, the black people doing the same thing to black people that the, that the, that the slave master did. And this is where you get a lot of the, the, the so-called uh, groups like the Boule, you understand, like the Boule and the black Greeks, you understand, and those Archons, they call themselves Archons, which is a whole other interesting matter we got to touch on, but they call themselves Archons, so they are the rulers, the Boule, you understand, the Bougie, the, 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 the Greeks. Some now call them the, the so-called Masons, the Freemasons over here, the ones who, who, who bowed 
to, to white supremacy and then establish something similar to white supremacy in order to be the intermediary, you understand, between the so-called field Negroes. So they were the so-called house Negroes. So what did um, the slave do? He began to see that the land of his captivity, that in this land the only things that meant anything was the money that was owned by slave Massa and the things that money could buy, and the slave only saw his freedom, his freedom. So this idea, this false idea, this logical fallacy, it remained foremost in the Ethiopian Hebrews, the lost, the lost sheep's mind, before and after the so-called physical chains of slavery and the bonds, stocks and bonds, were removed from his hands and feet, but still placed on his mind and his soul. And when the Lamb opened the seventh seal, silence covered the sky. Is Africa cursed?